campaign trail data from a new poll is highlighting the power of the Latino vote. According to the Hispanic Federation and Latino Victory Foundation, 73% of registered Latino voters are almost certain they will vote in the presidential election. That figure speaks volumes given that the Latino electorate is the second largest voting bloc in the United States. About 36 million Latinos are eligible to vote this year. That's a 4 million jump from 2020. Frankie Miranda joins us now live on the scene from the DNC in Chicago. He is the president and CEO of the Hispanic Federation. Frankie, thank you for taking the time to be with us. What is driving uh, such a large, uh, a, a large number of Latinos to participate in this election? Well, frankly, it is about the new landscape that we have right now uh, with regards to the presidential election. Uh, one of the things that we were facing as an organization, nonpartisan organization doing civic engagement, voter registration, was a segment of our community were not interested. They, they were not engaged in this process. But now we see that 50% of responders of our poll, they said that they are now more interested in the presidential election since Vice President Harris entered the presidential race. So this is a great opportunity for organizations like ours that want to do more civic engagement, more education, and getting Latinos to participate in the process. Yeah, and according to your poll, the most important uh, issue to Latino voters, inflation and cost of living, what does that tell you about how the campaigns need to target Latino voters? Well, first, I would like to start by saying that our community was disproportionately impacted by the COVID-19 pandemic and has been slower to recover from the pandemic. So pocketbook issues are extremely important for our community from cost of living, inflation, and also affordability of homes. So the campaigns have a great opportunity right now to really define these issues, these platforms, because we also found in our poll that many Latinos are still wondering what exactly is the platforms for both candidates when it comes to this election. So there is a great opportunity to talk to our community, use the nonprofit sector that has been on the front lines of all the services provided to our community and really engage culturally competent and linguistically competent. We also need to note that a lot of the young, younger Latinos, women and Spanish speaking Latinos are the ones that are more enthusiastic about this shift in the race. And, and where things stand right now, according to this poll, uh, that uh, currently, Vice President Harris leads former President Trump when it comes to registered Latino voters, 59% to 35%. What are the policies that she is laying out that it, it seems to be appealing to Latino voters right now? In all the policy uh, questions that we had, uh, uh, Kamala Harris, Vice President Harris, has been leading uh, a, a large margin be, uh, a, in comparison with Donald Trump. But one that is really, really uh, sticking out is uh, reproductive rights. When uh, she gets more than 60% approval, and also another battery of questions were about personal attributes, basically who Latinos trust the most when it comes to treating immigrants with respect, bringing, bringing the country together, opportunities for Latinos or the te temperament to be president. And in all of those also, uh, uh, Vice President Harris comes in front of Donald Trump. So it is a very interesting moment right now where both campaigns still have an opportunity to talk to our community, even though that Kamala Harris is still ahead, there's still some work that that, that campaign also needs to do because we know that our, as an average of two thirds of Latinos are the ones that decide who is going to be in the White House. So there's still some margin here, but it's a great opportunity to engage our community and to do it in the right way in communities. And also remembering that talking to Latinos in Florida or California, Chicago, or even in New York is going to be very different. So these are regional issues that needs to be talked to and especially pocketbook. Former President Trump, he has made immigration a central focus of his campaign. He has made remarks like saying that People entering this country illegally are taking American jobs. He has, uh, he has talked about a migrant crime wave. Just uh, there's, there's no evidence of that. Uh, but uh, at the same time, what feedback are you hearing about how that type of language is playing with Latino voters? 
Well, we separated the question on immigration reform and fairness to Latinos or immigrants that are already here in this country. And Kamala Harris comes ahead in the poll saying, Latinos saying that they trust that they, she will do a humane treatment in immigration reform that will be fair and equitable for those that are being here. There are still questions for Kamala Harris on how she will handle the border. And that is where there is a minimum uh, advantage from the Donald Trump campaign in which Latinos feel that they are very clear about what is it going to to tackle the issue of the border. But then again, we need to remind that everybody in this poll is saying that they want to hear more from both campaigns about what is exactly the plan, the platform, the policy platform for both campaigns. It is around 60% of people basically saying we want to hear more about it. And, and finally, you, you mentioned a bit, if you speak to a Latino voter in Florida, someone whose family may have come from Cuba or Venezuela, their answers, their beliefs uh, to, to certain questions may be very different from someone whose family uh, came from, from Mexico. With that said, because often Latino voters, it's put into this massive voting block. How can people better understand the different intricacies within the Latino vote? We need to talk to Latinos and understand what is their ancestral background, what is their history, what is their family history. People that come fleeing uh, persecution or regimes in Latin America uh, that are newly arrived or third generations Puerto Ricans living in the United States or Mexican Americans, every community has very specific ways in which we can address their concerns. At the end of the day, we cannot just have one message for all Latinos. We need to recognize what are their concerns. They need to, we need to recognize that they are in this country contributing to the economy, to culture, to society. And that is the way of being able to just get into these communities. And my personal belief at the Hispanic Federation also is is that the nonprofit organizations, community-based organizations, are the best messengers in communities to be able to relay the message and make possible for people to understand where they stand when it comes to uh, their role in this democracy. Actually, I actually have one more for you. When it comes to the issue of immigration, from what you have seen, the feedback you're hearing, what are the type of policies that Latino voters are looking for? Latino voters want uh, humane immigration reform. We have been kicking the can for more than three decades. It is the responsibility of Congress to really fix the immigration issue, the backlog, the defunding of the immigration issue in the United States is severe. So how can we just be very serious about it this is not just in the hands of the president of the united states which can do executive orders but they can be challenged in court this is squarely false in on congress and we need to make sure also that latinos understand that also when they are voting for this president we also need to make sure that they're voting down the ballots understanding that our issues like immigrations are at stake and that this is a problem that we need to resolve and we not continue letting this to just be a campaign um, football, uh, kicking the football, kicking the can to another administration. The problem is very serious and we want to resolve it now and Latinos are serious about it. All right, Frankie Miranda, thank you for your time. We appreciate it. Thank you. And as we